Let's move on to the to the track data um, with with Laratractinib. Clearly, the the first drug approved for this rare uh, yet actionable uh, mutation. Ed, you want to walk us through uh, the data on Laratractinib and intract fusion cancers? Yeah, it's uh, it was fascinating because <clears throat> I think for the first time we we saw data that not one singular tumor type uh, you'd show up and look for. You know, I'm looking for the lung sessions, you're looking for thyroid, you're looking for sarcoma, you're looking for GI, and this is one of those all-encompassing tumor types, and especially for all of us, mostly adult oncologists, even the pediatric stuff. I mean, I don't think any of us even heard of some of those tumor types that were being described in the original study uh, that, that showed, you know, these fibrosarcomas and, and, and especially salivary glands being head and neck. So it, it's been really cool to actually see that happen. Um, <clears throat> you know, I love these types of designs where you're focusing on a biomarker. You don't need a thousand patients. It's, you know, they had 50 some odd patients for their study and the waterfall plots are just looking incredible. And everything, everything's a different color, and it's all going down. <laughs> it's a lot of water. <laughs> a lot of water. I love that, you know? And uh, it's like the rainbow, you know, falling. sort of uh, aspect. Uh, I think they ran out of colors to actually describe every histologic subtype that was included. And again, you have adults, you have kids, and it shows you, again, I'll, I'll harp back on eligibility, God, you know, there should have been two eligibility criteria in that study, right? One was that, you know, you had to have a pulse, and the second was you had to have an N-track, you know, sort of, uh, I mean, that's all it was needed. Uh, and when you're seeing response rates in the multiply treated cancers of 70 plus percent, uh, and they did a, another analysis, they added some additional patients from a couple other studies, there were 35, it was presented at ESMO last year, and the response rate is holding. Uh, they're actually seeing conversion of PRs, partial responses, to CRs later. We all love those delayed CRs, right? Uh, it means that there's continued sort of efficacy that's ongoing. You're not just getting your first hit out. And that for chemo, we're used to that, right? If you're treating a small cell, if you don't see that response after the first two cycles, it's not a good sign. Here, it's quite the opposite. It's just sort of ramping up and, and getting a little uh, steam ahead of it. Um, you know, it's way too early with a lot of this data to show survival numbers because it, they, their endpoints and their, uh, their, their uh, uh, different uh, um, uh, targets haven't been met yet. So uh, the events are continuing, but you know, you're know you looking at 58% plus patients who are progression free, the durations are long, the survivals are long. Uh, you know, this is exactly what we want to see in a targeted therapy. And I think many of us were confused, frankly, you know, we pride ourselves at Levine of being very nimble in how we incorporate things. Uh, we do internal testing, reflex testing. In lung, we were doing uh, PDL1 within six weeks after the ESMO presentation a few years back. And frankly, we had to step back and say, okay, which tumor types are we going to test this in? Are we going to outsource it? Are we going to insource it? We are actually implementing reflex testing in about seven different tumor types that we've identified, and that's what we'll do up front. So every one of our lung patients uh, at stage four will start getting this uh, test, uh, as well as you know glioblastomas, thyroids, sarcomas. Can I ask you, you a know, question? Yeah. Though it's interesting, I just I just have to ask this: How do you think this is impacting? you know, our paradigm of, oh, we don't give these new drugs to people unless they failed all the standard therapies. Yeah. When you have now a, a targeted therapy with very little side effects, are you going to still give them first-line carbo yeah. tax? And, and, and that's why we're doing reflex up front, yeah. because we totally believe that you should be on the right therapy uh, from the start, and we believe in that targeted therapy paradigm. And so, it's lung cancer yeah. oncologist is relatively easy for us, I think, to, to do that. How this would made you, it, this well, you it's ever sell chemotherapy when someone could potentially get this? I think no. it would be what patient would agree to take all the side effects of chemotherapy? But it goes back to the eligibility criteria. So the trials actually require technically that they've failed Previous standard treatment. therapy. That's right. And now what we're finding is patients are saying, I'm refusing, they're eligible because they're refusing standard therapy. And that's the sort of the, the little sliver you go through, right? Yes. They're not eligible, just, and not just because the patient refuses to take it, so yes, they're no longer they're eligible, yeah. in my opinion, and how we document that is how so, we document so, it. So, <laughs> so the question is, will the insurance have a problem? We, we haven't seen yeah. that, honestly. Well, they, other drugs they, as well. We they will save that. money if they actually give the drugs in the appropriate patients. They and will not lose more money extra wasted in drug. giving IO to everyone than they will with targeted therapy. What's also beautiful, and you notice this, is the side effects. And the side effects data on this stuff, I mean, 
we went through a period of time in targeted therapy where the pills sometimes were a little more toxic than some of the chemos out there, and uh, especially because we have pemetrexed in lung cancer, it's such an easy drug to give. But you know, this has got very few grade three, grade you know, uh, side effects, uh, some dizziness, some constipation. I mean, gosh, that's that's Tuesday for uh, many yeah, of us. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's okay. It's <laughs> my so. Friday. But it's yeah. also it's so impressive. A third of them had more than three or three or more lines of yeah. therapy, which really goes to show. Imagine you've gone through the discouragement. I think when I trained, there was always that probably misconception that if you didn't do well with the first, you're going to have a less likelihood of doing well with the second, less likelihood of the third. Mm -hmm. We know in sarcoma that doesn't pan out. It's great to see it with this, yeah. to have a response rate this high for someone that potentially could have had four lines of other therapy. I mean, it's really encouraging for patients. Yeah, seven, which, go ahead. Which means you can use it frontline. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Right, but all the patients that currently have had other lines of therapy. No, but that's a trial. That's a clinical Correct. trial. Yeah. And then tomorrow with, you start it fresh. Yeah. With expected life expectancies of three months. I mean, a lot of these patients had like 50% of their lungs filled with sarcoma. Mm -hmm. Or I had a patient with a tumor wrapped around his carotid at the base of skull and was told you've got three months to do it. And that was five years ago. An incredible story, this trial. 17 different tumor types, age range from four months to 74 years of age. Response rate with this drug, irrespective of the gene fusion, irrespective of age, irrespective of histology. Interestingly, two patients in that trial um, went on to, to have it as curative intent therapy and have limb saving surgeries, limb sparing surgeries. They were unresectable, they got the drug, uh, and then went on, young kids uh, went on for curative intent therapy. So, an, an incredible story. I mean, the fortunate thing was this was histology agnostic, mm. not the same as, for example, BRAF. Which is, so that was the lucky thing about this drug. It's interesting. I've learned a lot. Uh, you know, as you mentioned, BRAF targeted therapies don't work for all BRAF uh, mutated solid tumors. Not the Correct. same way. Not the same way. <laughs> um, and this is a little different. This seemed to work irrespective of the, the tissue type.